You're listening to the Incomparables Total Party Kill podcast, in which a group of friends play Dungeons and Dragons on the internet together for your amusement. This is episode number 129, posted January 2018. Tattered Gray Cloak. So you, uh, when last we met, uh, you were all standing upon a hill next to uh, some recently excavated graves that you excavated uh, Mm -hmm. that contained uh, uh, some occupants. Uh, What did they have? They had. (laughs) Who was uh, living down there? (laughs) uh, They were dead corpses. You found uh, uh, a halfling corpse, uh, a female human warrior. a uh, human warrior in a black cloak with strange stony armor that you recognized from your encounter many, many moons ago. Uh, and one male human in a white robe with black feathers at the shoulders. You now, also... Remind me, were some of these the envoys that we were looking for, or did we determine that? You did not determine that. Were... <laughs> yeah. Um... I would like to determine whether these are the envoys <laughs> we're looking for. Well, one of them is a halfling, and halflings are unusual. Right. So but you there, can... there were a couple of humans in that party, as I recall. Yes. All right. Um, and you also, ooh, I think if everyone's in Rule 20, you see currently, mm-hmm. uh, I, I mentioned to you that you could see a spire in the distance, and this is what the spire in the distance looks like with large vultures flying around it. Hmm. Can you and remind us the, uh, the name of the spire? Yes, and you, you. So you're here because you went to. Well, you got kicked out of Cled. You went to Freedom. Uh, you met a, a helpful NPC whose name I could not think of, uh, and he brought you to these graves. And you said, "What's the deal with that tower?" And he said, "Oh, that's the Feathergale Spire. That's where the uh, Feathergale Society hangs out." It's pretty inspiring. Did he have any explanation for what the Feathergale Society is? Uh, I don't think any of you asked that. Uh, what? <laughs> what, were, what were we on last time we played? It was the end of the session. It, it was, was just a, it was yeah, like a, yeah. the four and a half hour hours of D&D. Like, that's what we were yeah. on. Yeah. I had been in the same room as Scott for like, you know, like a day. So, <laughs> so. And it was a I mean, pleasure. I mean, I mean, you're great. Mm. I was just, I was overwhelmed at that point. Ah, uh, yes. There's a, a limit. With the awesomeness? Yeah, just when you're around or, Scott, you're okay. either overwhelmed or underwhelmed. You're never whelmed. It's always, it's the <laughs> yeah, highs yeah. and the lows that's right. with Scott. That's, that's... I've, I've had that experience, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, she's been underwhelmed by me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so you, you, at a Greek restaurant. <laughs> yes, that was that was a good meal. Uh, you uh, turned to the uh, the 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 local uh, cankerd who brought you here and say, "What's the deal with the Feathergale Society?" And he says to you, uh, "They're just like the this group of uh, rich kind of debutantes that pr- think that they're protecting uh, the area, and they mostly fly around on giant vultures, uh, sweet, looking for trouble, thinking they're." Uh, and to solve said trouble, but they usually cause more problems than they, they do. But they're generally harmless. Debutantes. Debutantes. I, I know. Well, uh, friends, uh, that possibly seems uh, worthy of investigation. I mean, you know, we're, we're only going to be out in the waste for so long, and how many opportunities are we going to have to go to Feathergale Spire? Uh, but remind me, what the heck are we doing, and why would we go to Feathergale Spire? <laughs> Remember, you are looking for the halfling trade delegation. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes. That uh, and also you have heard you were sent here by uh, Mashata Mashatra, who is the uh, basically the the minister of defense for Tyr. She mm-hmm. recruited you to find out two things: a uh, where these this delegation went, and to investigate the. There's been some strange reports of unusual elemental magic yeah. in the wastes. Um, so like, and we're supposed to let's... retrieve the delegation's papers, and I yeah. think Aline's character actually recognizes would recognize some of the people, maybe not the halflings. But right, yes, yeah. There was one human amongst the group that we were looking for. That was and... Desena Norval. Yeah, there was Rudolph. Do, do we Tesselar. have any idea what she looked, she or he looks like? Uh, yes. And, and would, would we know... maybe be able to identify whether one of these corpses we're standing next to is uh, this person? No, you don't know. You, you you are certain that it is not. 
Okay. You also, last time we, we pretty much ended with discovering the graves and digging them up. You haven't searched around. I don't know Got if you it. search around or not. So I would like to yes. see if there are any papers in amongst the halfling corpses. You did check all the bodies. There was nothing on the bodies. Oh, okay. I'm okay. going gonna, gonna to search around, so. Excellent. Search around. Perception. Search yes. around. Search up, search up, and search down. Uh, that's is this like desert territory here, or it is? It is okay. Uh, in that case, that is 16, 19. You're always in desert territory. Uh, so you spend about I don't know a good forty minutes looking around, and you find a confused collection of tracks, a few broken arrows, a discarded javelin, and a tattered gray cloak. All right. I would like to look more closely at the tracks and do a survival check just to see what I can get out of that. Sure. Oh, that I uh, rolled a 20, which becomes oh. a... You don't know anything. 29. 29. With oh. a 29, you can tell that um, it looks like these people were in some sort of battle. It appears that... Uh, the the group with the halfling because you could tell halfling feet from other feet uh, was uh, kind of approaching this hill. And they seem to have been ab- ambushed by someone, but you're you're unsure. Other than the halfling, all the other boot prints kind of look mm-hmm. the same. So Can we uh, we determined that they're all boot prints as opposed to there's no say like giant vulture tracks. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, like, you you would also know that giant vul- giant marks. vultures tend to attack from the air and don't land and walk. They never they never land. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> they would if they were attacking something, they wouldn't probably land. All right. Well, you know what? I'm just going to roll uh my nature check because I haven't rolled anything yet. <laughs> Do I Ragnar, have any idea? Ragnar studies for ten, ten for, with a roll of ten if there are any of these uh, <laughs> wo- boots were worn by vultures. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm wondering if I can get an idea of how many people, entities total, just took part in this battle. Uh, it is hard to tell because the, the tracks are so jumbled. Uh, mm-hmm. But certainly, probably somewhere in the neighborhood of ten to twenty. Okay. Carlos would like um, to look at the tattered gray cloak more closely. Mm-hmm. It is a tattered gray cloak uh, that does not have any kind of, dis, you know, standout no, features. There's no dressmaker's mark on it to tell you. Catchco uh, no. will do oh. a quick arcana check on the uh, tattered gray cloak. And that's a 14. Uh, it is a tattered gray cloak. I uh, wear with no arcana. I wear the cloak. I wear it. I put it on. All right. Carlos, <laughs> right, right on your, your character sheet. Tattered gray cloak. Got it. <laughs> Maybe you can wear it to the cloak man. You can wear to the ramshackle tavern if we ever make it back to Clegg. That's right. I feel like this. Do this... I <laughs> go for it, Aline? I was just going to ask: Do I recognize any of the clothing or any of the people? Is this someone that I have encountered while, um, you know, working for? Uh, What's her face? Shaking down people in tear. <laughs> uh, no, you don't. Okay. So, all right. Let me let me kind of ask some questions out loud, not necessarily to our dungeon master, but to the group. Um, if, I feel like we, I mean, this halfling body seems like a pretty big clue, um, that we have not totally figured out the meaning of yet. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm a little, it's a dead halfling. That's it's a dead meaning. halfling. I mean, we have these two missions, there's weirdness with elemental stuff. And it seemed like we picked up on some of that happening in Kled. There's probably more of it help happening elsewhere in the, in the wastelands. And then where did this, uh, group of, of envoys disappear? And it, do you think we can conclude that they never made it to Kled? It sure sounds that way to me. That, okay. That they, there's no but, evidence in Kled of them reaching there. They, they seem to have, something bad seems to have happened. I think we found this out between yeah. Freedom and Kled, which is sort of where we are now, somewhere in here. We know that they, but, we know they got in a fight with the, with the caravan. That and was we're by that just orc. outside Freedom, basically. Half and orc. Um, the one thing that we did find in Kled were the halfling, like, you know, disc token things. So mm-hmm. either either one of you know some of the party made it to Kled and left those there, or whomever Somebody. attacked them took those from them and took them mm-hmm. to Kled. So there's yeah. definitely a Kled connection. Yeah. Um, uh, we also bought a halfling book on genealogy. In mm-hmm. Yes, which may have yeah. been. We which, spent about an hour this, doing that. Can that I was look awesome. this dead halfling up in that book? Uh, do Good we times. Have, does he have yeah, just... The book amazingly is called the Kled Connection. So. Mm. <laughs> Um, I'm just wondering, like... By Dan Brown. Okay. Um, 
Sam do Brown. we do, does the uh, do, do the can we judge Sam how Brown. how long these uh these corpses have been dead for? Does that line up with when the whole group of people? Uh, you could, someone could give me a uh, medicine or health or survival check. I can do. I can do medicine. Okay. Uh, let's see. A nine survival. You don't know. 24. And Scott, I have no idea. Oh, with a twenty-four, you do know that it seems to line up with when you knew the caravan was moving about. Uh, so that was and Scott, weeks ago. the caravan was like a big group of people, right? Like there's kind of five specific people Everyone's that we're first. looking for who might potentially some of them might still be alive even but like there could be lots of people who are part of that caravan who would be murdered and buried in the desert uh and right i mean it's not like the caravan is just the people that with names that you you gave us before they um, have an entourage they do have an entourage and okay. you would imagine they have some form of conveyance as well yeah and th- there's not just checking. There's not a wagon buried under these people, right? There. Well, I guess you could dig more, but you are pretty sure that <laughs> okay. uh, there's no wagon under there. All right. Well, now, these Feathergale people fly around on their birds. There's a chance they may have seen any sort of a situation. It seems that like went they down could, with yeah. some halfling folk. And also, the spire is a thing we can see that we haven't killed anybody in. Yet. Yeah. So I maybe mean, we should head that way. It seems <laughs> like we're within sight of them. They could be a very useful source of information on what happened. Now. They could have been involved in whatever bad things happened to these people Possible. we're looking for. In so which I think... case, we can slaughter them all. And, and okay, win. I'm and just then, thinking we'll like... join the list of places where we've killed people. <laughs> That's right. Um, also, maybe I mean Carlos. Maybe you could stay in this fire forever. So it's I don't know. I don't know. Are there doors <laughs> anyone... that I can open there? Oh, I bet it's riddled with doors. Man, that would be great. I don't know. I mean, I, I bet. I mean, who wants a spire? Who's which, who? Who does a desert spire fit into their backstory? Anyone? Anyone been like their parents killed by? I don't understand what you're saying. Backstory. I just live my life. Was anybody's life. parents anybody's parents killed by vultures, large size or regular sized? <laughs> Carlos um. exists in the now. There is no past. No. Okay. Regdar well, is past, Regdar's family. I'm calling it a backstory. By the way, who's strange? Who is Carlos's mates. door buddy today? Keeping an eye on him, making sure he doesn't open any oh, spray doors. I've got doors. my eye on him. I've All right. right. I'm watching Carlos. All right. Shara's, Shara's, Shara's on Shara's door on, buddy duty. Yeah, Carlos All right. Duty. I'll, I'll, I'll keep my eye on Amwal, but he's being very quiet so far. So I'm going to hide yes. behind my tattered <laughs> gray cloak, and you're not going to notice. Yeah, we can see you in that cloak, nope. Carlos. It's a cloak of invisibility, I've decided. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it's got like this giant... It's just a tattered gray cloak. All right, team, should we proceed to the spire and... Let's do uh, it. Yeah. I mean, do we... Do, all right, let me just check. Do we present ourselves honestly? Do we come up with a cover story now? Or do we come up with a cover story okay, on the moment? Look, do I we know what fire inspectors. Is. I do not know you know, but I have not heard any truth come wow. from anybody's mouth the entire time I've been with you. I'm My name saying. is Regdar. I'm just a guy. Regdar, I'm your friend. I, are you suggesting we get our stories straight in advance? That is no, that would be dumb. amazing. Uh. I'm thinking our stories could be slightly more in alignment. I'm not saying they have to be straight, but like <laughs> a little less crooked is what I'm looking All right. for. How about this? We are spire inspectors. Okay. Because <laughs> let me tell you, if we walk up there and we're like, oh yeah, we're vulture salesmen, and they're going to be like, we have plenty of vultures. And then what do we do? Then we pivot and we're like, oh yeah, we were a vulture salesman. <laughs> Now we're vulture we're, food no, we're salesmen. We're carrion salesmen. We're carrion salespeople. Come on. We're selling these fine leather jackets. You know, that's the thing about carrion, though. Like, you don't sell carrion. You just find it. Like, that's I do. the difference. <laughs> Are you carrion? He's carrion, carrion. Carlo- Carlos, when was the last time you sold carrion? Um, okay, you got me there. It was yeah, back see? in my gladiator days. Wait, way to stand up under the most basic of questioning. <laughs> Now, if this I'm a gladiator, happened, okay? Don't have me talk. I, I guess I I'm just saying, if this had happened in the spire, do you know how many doors they have to throw us out of that spire? It looks like it's basically all, all right. doors. That they I'll, tell you, throw us I'll out. tell you what, right, Dart, I will stand in the back next time. Now, that may mean you are run through by a sword, but I won't Ooh. say anything and to embarrass you. So, okay. you know, you, you choose. I where feel you like want this me. is a great deal for everybody involved. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> hey, let's go to the spire. Yes. Okay. All right. Are you are you all going to the spire? Yeah, I think, I think have so. we, we have we together. ravaged these graves enough? Is there anything left of these graves um, that we haven't? Uh, do we have to maybe guys, we should re- through? bury these people? Do we? Yeah, should we rebury oh. them? Yeah. Should, we, should we tip the guy that showed us these graves? <laughs> How does that work? What's he, the etiquette? I think he wandered here? off. <laughs> okay. He did wander off. He, once okay. you started bickering about your your story, he was like, <laughs> uh, "I've got to go." That sounds about all right, right. Yeah, I say we I say we rebury. Them. It's you know they were shallow graves to start with. It's not like it's going to take that much work. All right. Yeah, Carlos, you're good at reburying. I knew this was going to come back to me. Yeah, all right. It's why I'm here. 
Right. Carlos, Carlos, and Omwal help. Carlos, Carlos and Omwal uh, rebury the bodies, and then Carlos uh, uh, wipes his brow with the edge of his tattered gray cloak. Yeah, I mean a shovel is a shovel is a shovel is basically like a weird sword when you think about it. Yeah, that's sure. that's true. Yeah, I defeated uh, it. Hey, everybody! I defeated the graves. Another one. Good victory job, for Carlos. Good job, Carlos. Fantastic. We knew you could do it. Hero. Yep. All right, Feathergale Spire rises from a pillar of rock high into the air, the tallest point for miles. Built from white limestone and embellished in marble, the spire resembles a gleaming sword that pierces the sky. Uh, and everyone should oh see a picture of the, the spire in Roll20. Uh, what spire doesn't resemble a sword piercing the sky? Um, Just curious. I, 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 it's, you know, don't ask I don't me know that. what spire. I this. It's kind <laughs> yeah. of a basic quality of spires. Yes, this, well, it, but it sounds better than the spire resembles a typical spire. Steve, <laughs> Steve, Steve your Victorian conundrums could use some work. <laughs> All right. Uh, the gatehouse faces... How is a spire like a writing desk? <laughs> Uh, the gatehouse faces the opposite cliff, its drawbridge, the only apparent point of entry. Tall, wide windows encompass the bottom level of the tower, absent only upon the gatehouse side. A circle of open stalls rings the tower's foundation, where it meets the rock. Above each stall, the sculp- a sculpture of a hippogriff in flight leaps from the tower's base. Beneath Feathergale Spire to the east, a wide, gusty canyon yawns through the hills. So you see, basically, the spire, as you approach, uh, you notice that the spire is on this kind of outcropping of rock, and there is a a 20-foot gap from the the cliff that you are on uh, to the spire. The drawbridge is currently up. Did we did we come the wrong way, or are we on the draw the side of the drawbridge? You are on the side of the drawbridge facing the spire. All right, that's, well, that's lucky. And there is uh, the entrance. Oh uh, no, that's not right. Uh, gap Although it's of... only twenty feet, I mean we have rope. That's that's true. <laughs> Let me just read this, and then you can do whatever you want. A gap is, of twenty feet is a feet. very deep chasm. <laughs> yes, a gap of twenty feet separates the ledge where the path ends from the closed drawbridge on the Feathergale spire. The space between the cliff's edge and the gatehouse drops several hundred feet to the bottom of the canyon. Near the ledge, a brass bell hangs from a wooden post. Somebody shoot the bell. That's so you, you've, no. seen this, you've seen this from far off because you, you all yeah. have eagle eyes. So uh, you can uh, discern that. You, you can decide if you want to walk up this way. You could also theoretically walk all the way down, go down into the canyon, and come from behind if you want. Uh, so there you go. And is it is the is the air full of vultures with riders who are no doubt aware of our presence? Uh, you see two vultures, uh, giant vultures that have two one rider on each that are circling the tower, and they have almost certainly seen you. I think we Let's should wave. just approach openly and ring the bell. Why not? We're just gonna we're just gonna ask some questions. Um, well, yeah, let's so, hide among the dunes. Uh, shoot the bell with an arrow and see who comes out, and then we'll laugh. Uh, Omwal says, "Me no like these giant vultures. Me think they looking for giant giants to eat." <laughs> <laughs> oh, Omwal, uh, two lines of code. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, sh- so, yeah, let's friends, just, shall let's we? Uh, shall we head down this little bridge to yeah. our doom? Um, why not? Why not? Um, I guess we walk down the little platform and... Uh, you know, I'd like, before we do, I'd like to do a quick perception check to see oh. if there's anybody, like, ensconced around the entrance that might be hidden, I'm waiting just... to shoot people that approach. Okay. You know what? I never bother to do this. I'm going to cast Mage Armor on myself. <laughs> Carlos Ooh, just keeps walking concept. and he's you moving toward the bell now. Regular guy. Okay. I'm... Armor. Uh, I got a three perception, so if there is anybody, I, I don't I'm see watching him. Carlos. You are, you are certain that there is no one hidden at the base of the tower. Ketchka. Carlos inches towards the bell. Uh, Regdar uh, is is surrounded by a uh, glowing uh, force field. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's I think it's more subtle than that, but whatever. All right. Yeah, uh, uh, Regdar is surrounded by something, some yeah. arcane uh, force. I feel yeah. like Perhaps. I feel like here in Athos, to be surrounded by glowing force <laughs> might be a <laughs> well, bit of a you know, Carlos offers Seems Regdar bad. his tattered cloak to cover his major. <laughs> 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 And so I do. Good thing we stole that corpse, that that cloak from a corpse. No, it was just in the dirt. It was in the dirt. Uh, Yeah, who do you who do you think it belongs to, Carlos? I don't know. It could be anybody. (laughs) Carlos, this is this is shoddy logic here. I'm just keeping my also, Carlos. I'm just. I ring the uh, bell. Traps (laughs) and people coming Uh, at us and that sort of thing. 
you ring the bell and uh, a little door opens uh, and a, 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 a woman's head We're here to see the wizard. Pops out. I love when no, doors open. That. It's be- That's a kink awesome. of a different color. And she says, uh, greetings. How could we be of service? Remember when we said we were getting a story straight? <laughs> Regdar, it's all you. Regdar. Uh, hello, we are travelers. Hi. Uh, we seek, uh, we seek uh, parlay with your, uh, with your people. <laughs> Works. Oh, well, boy. fantastic. Who, who made him? <laughs> put him in charge. We are here to share We're, tales okay. of the outside land, in, and and perhaps in exchange for sustenance. Um, oh well, also you also looking for some friends, Regdar. You, you came on the right day. Lower the drawbridge, and they uh, lower the drawbridge. Oh, I'm wow. Gonna, Friendly I, people. That's weird. Reg, Regdar looks at everybody else condescendingly. <laughs> <laughs> See? Is there so any smug. other way a Regdar looks? Uh, and the drawbridge is What, could, uh, what could go wrong? There's nothing worse than a smug, regular guy. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I roll a 15 on condescension. Um, Ooh, very nice. All right. Uh, let's, uh, guys, let's do it. Remember, just, you know, we're travelers. That's not a lie. We travel all the time. And we're looking for some people. Um, and you see uh, the the woman. Now you can see her uh, completely. And she looks... I just want to explain what she's wearing. Uh, what are you wearing? <laughs> These people it... believe that they're do-gooders, so there's no particular reason why we can't just tell them what we're yeah, up to. Yeah, nobody well, good no, has ever done anything bad. To, but we can tell them that we're looking for people, we just can't say why. Yeah, yeah well, mm-hmm. that's true. She is wearing... As long as we couch it in, you know, mm-hmm. some, some niceties about some, how some we know friends. that they're... They're on the side of good, and so are we. It's, She's it's Shara's a... old pals we're looking for. Are we? Yeah, I mean, are we allowed? Mm-hmm. I mean, how much How much do we have to conceal? I totally forget. Re- Regdar may also forget uh, how much how secret our mission is. Like, could we just say uh, that we're, like, security operatives for the caravans? Um, I don't... Uh, I believe that uh, the uh, Mashakra wanted you to be kind of low-key, undercover. Mm-hmm. She straight. doesn't want it to get out because she doesn't want the other mm-hmm. uh, Sorcerer Kings possibly to uh, grab it because this is a, you right. know, Tyr has recently been freed mm-hmm. uh, and they want this, this trade relations is very important and if any of the other Sorcerer Kings found out, they would use this as leverage. Mm-hmm. Now we've also been sent on sort of a submission from Freedom and nobody told us to be particularly low-key about that so we can inquire after the halflings without Revealing anything about mm-hmm. our and other since regime. Shara actually recognizes and knows some of the people, it's perfectly, you know, normal to say we're looking for for some people. They don't need to know what kind of a what kind of a, a mission those folks were on. We can just okay. You know, just Shara wouldn't like, even yeah. necessarily know. Sure, I just think that might be the next thing they immediately ask. But I don't. Whatever, <laughs> it'll be okay. Uh, we so just have to know inspectors. that. We just have to know they're coming this way. <laughs> yeah, we've never gotten into trouble for asking questions. Uh-oh. Uh oh. Well, rem- enter, enter, friends, enter. All right, are we? Entering we enter. The spire? Thank you. Yeah. All right, you are entering the front hall. The entrance is a 30-foot-long hall of white stone. At the opposite end of the hall are two 12-foot-tall doors, like those of the entry gate. An eagle carved from a massive timber hangs from the far side of the ceiling, suspended on strong chains. Slender wings of steel swoop close to its sides. Its head is also fashioned of steel. Uh, she's, uh, and the, You see that in the hall there is uh, this woman who is wearing scale armor and she's also wearing a white cloak with black feathers on the shoulders and in there are also two people who are wearing uh cloaks and hoods that are standing uh in the corners of the the room looking like they're just kind of guarding the area and the woman says ah i'm savra what is your name to regdar oh i i am regdar uh uh recently of tear how are you Oh, Tyr, you are you're far from home, Rektar. I'm sure you have many uh, tales of adventure to share with the the society, well, the Feathergale we society. Do. And, as as you can see uh from our appearance, uh we, we travel all over. Um uh, t- t- tell me, are um how long have you been here at the uh the Feathergale society? Well, you tell it is ironic that you would ask on this of all days uh because today, It's Rex Manning Day, everybody. <laughs> today is the tenth anniversary of the Feathergale Society and our occupation of the Feathergale Spire, and in fact, we are having a big celebration tonight. That I'm sure you are more than welcome to join us and sup uh, as as you should after such a long and clearly we... harrowing journey. As she looks at you and sees that, how you are... are you set for hootenannies? Yeah, for I was going to say we are because 
You mm. ready to turn this celebration up a notch? Because we we brought a three green. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm not sure if we have uh, food that would be of the Fry Creed's uh, uh, taste, but certainly all are welcome in the Feather You don't have fire. any elves in the in the tower uh, here? We are. I, I very sharply <laughs> elbow. Oh, I see. I see you brought your own food. <laughs> <laughs> really, it's the bard part of my backstory and not so much the three green part that we're trying to push forward here, but okay. Uh, so, uh, friend, uh, do you have time to talk or should we, uh, should we well, talk I will... more later at the celebration? I will, uh, I, I think that I should take you to see, um, uh, uh, someone whose name I need to look up. Your leader? <laughs> My now, leader, correct me if yes. I'm wrong here, but did not we find one of the people in these shallow graves with a white cloak with black feathers? You did indeed. All right, hmm. so we have that part of information in our back pocket in case we... We do. Yes. Want it. Uh, Gain their trust. Yes, I will see they did it. <laughs> assuming they didn't ice this guy themselves and dump him in the desert. I'm sure you have many questions. Uh, I want to take you to see uh, Thrall Mursaka, who is the leader of uh, the Feather Guild Society, and he will answer any questions that you, you may have. That uh, would be lovely. Thank you so much for your hospitality. This is well, quite a spire you have here. Well, it's really you. inspiring. I aspire mm. to have a place like this someday. Yes. <laughs> It's like a sword that pierces the sky. Yeah. As uh, many spires are. <laughs> <laughs> also, she... those those vultures you got, they look real impressive. Intense. Yes, the mm -hmm. we we breed them ourselves uh and train Ooh. from uh, a very young age to to ride them. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope you train them not to eat three cream. And she uh well, certainly we we do we don't uh eat uh three cream. Uh, neither do our vultures. Uh, and she turns to uh, the, the cloaked uh, gentleman and says, Initiates, open the door! And they scurry and open the door and reveal a spiral staircase in which she says, follow me. We will go up to the pinnacle to talk with Thrall. And uh, she walks into the spiral staircase and starts walking up, beckoning you to follow her. All right. Uh, I, give, I give everybody the... Uh, the, the Rec universally recognized hand signal that we've all been uh, practicing for many an adventure, which mm. is everybody continue to roll perception checks and let's get a uh, quality threat assessment of the Feathergale Society in terms of how many people <laughs> they got going on, how many birds, how big this place is, uh, how, if we have to murder every last person, uh, like how many hours is that going to take? Um, so, team, go! <laughs> What yeah. does that when hand signal look that, like? Uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know, but Amal just gives him a high five instead. <laughs> Who's got good insight and can uh, keep an eye on or an ear on whoever we talk to here as to whether they're on the up and up? My insight's not bad. It's plus six. Oh, that's decent. So. Uh, right. so I will tell you, I will just explain what the central staircase looks like. It's a spiral staircase that runs through the tower center. It has landings on each floor. The stairs have a handrail along the outer edge. It does, you notice if you're looking in this room, uh, it goes down as well as up. <laughs> it's fancy that way. Uh, and in this room, Ooh. you will be coming from the, uh, the west side. So you're going east and on the east door of this room in the middle of the room, of course, is the staircase, uh, on the east wall you find uh, a closed door and on the north and south wall each wall features another closed door do we have uh do we have time to, to kind of chat with our friend here or is this we're we're headed right to, right to the uh, uh well wall. she's going up the stairs i don't know if you're following her up or yeah. not yeah we're, we're following. following and i i get yeah. a 14 on insight just to sort of judge like Overall, does she seem shifty or does she seem pretty like genuinely like, oh, cool, travelers, come to our she's, party? She seems quite excited that you are here on such a day and uh, she's, she hopes that you will. She seems genuine in her excitement. This is weird, guys. I'm not sure how to deal with this situation. People aren't usually nice to us. Uh, and you go up one level uh, and you see uh, two kind of a double door. Yay, we're and... level six now. <laughs> what are our powers? <laughs> That's canon. That's well, canon. Awesome. You then go down two levels <laughs> no! to the basement. Oh, no, <laughs> he did say the stairs go both ways. So yeah. and the, uh, the door, these double doors are open to what seems like a great hall, and you see two more of it's uh, all right. These feather gale knights who are wearing much like uh, the woman Savra uh, scale armor and uh, cloaks, and they are they seem to be busy setting up a large table uh, as you pass by. And as you're going up, Savra, if you want to ask her anything, she's chatting with you. Quite pointing readily. out like architectural features and you know, tell you about the, and the many exploits all the preparations the they're doing 
Yes, yeah. so everybody's quite excited. Uh, this mm-hmm. is, you know, we don't normally pause for celebration. We are so busy sure. with our mission. What is yeah, What is the mission of the Feathergill Society? Well, we have to we have to keep the the area clear of any uh, monsters or threats to oh, very uh, noble. people around. Yes. Does your do, do you have a do you do you have one vulture? or Do you just take whatever vulture is available to you when you have to work? Uh, oh, do you mean if we have assigned vultures? Uh, yeah, you, we we grow bonds with all of the vultures equally, so that okay. In case do the vultures have names? Uh, no, they do not. <laughs> I see, Scott. <laughs> sure, they don't. How do you, how do you tell them? Somebody doesn't how do you speak about. They them? do have names that you do not know. But yet. but if numbers. you were to name the vultures, what would you name them? <laughs> Hmm, that's a fascinating question that I've never given any thought to, and I will continue to give no thought to it. <laughs> you know, sometimes consistency. I like that. Sometimes I'm looking out for the under dungeon master, and sometimes there's other times. So, and as you pass the great hall, she says, "This is where we'll be having our celebration." Uh, and uh, off we we have one more level to go. We go up to the third level, and uh, you see off of this landing. Uh, it's a circular landing, so this, the you see two doors, kind of, and you can extrapolate that there are probably two more doors here. Uh, okay. They are all closed, though. Can you and, give us a sense uh, how many... Uh, is this place, like, bustling with activity? Are there dozens of initiatives that we're seeing running around, or does it seem like kind of a skeleton well, crew? Well, so far you've seen five people total, the two... Okay. Uh, cloaked, uh, or I guess really robed initiates in the entry hall. Uh, then you saw a bunch of closed doors. You went up another level. You saw the great hall where there are two knights that are uh, setting up things. Uh, and then you went up another level and uh, the, she says, oh, this is uh, living quarters on this level. All the doors are closed. Um, and now you are going to go up one more level uh, to the pinnacle, which is at the apex of the tower. And the stairs terminate at a round stone gazebo that continues Uh, upward in a needle-like minaret. Beyond Mm. this enclosure, a small lawn grows upon the top of the tower. Four paths paved with white stones point the directions of the compass, each path ending in a pointed stone crenellation. At the pinnacle's edge is a spyglass on a tripod pointed downward. Mm. From this vantage point, the Feathergale Knights possess a supreme view of all that transpires in the nearby canyon mm. and the nice hills view. beyond. Uh, you see uh, here there are two more Feathergale Knights, uh, but they are currently circling the tower, riding giant vultures. Uh, and you see a man in his that looks to be uh, human. He is well built in his early 50s. He is uh, wearing an embossed uh, uh, plate uh, on his uh, in his armor that's embossed with feather patterns, and he has a kingly cloak that boasts a feathered mantle. He smooths his white blonde hair into place, and then bows very low before you, uh, as if he were only a lowly courtier. And he says, uh, "Welcome to Feathergale Spire, retreat of the Feathergale Society. I am Thurl Morasak." The Lord Commander. Savra, I see, has brought you to meet with me. Welcome, travelers. You come on an auspicious day, the very 10th anniversary of our society that I founded, uh, to help keep the valley free and to help travelers such as yourselves make sure that you do not starve and die a horrible death in the desert. Welcome. Regdar attempts to bow even lower. Is that an acrobatics check? (laughs) Sure. (laughs) Um, and he, mo- he 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 waves at everybody else to, to bow at least a little bit. I bow. Scott, are we within are we within easy sight from up here of those shallow graves we were at previously? Uh well, you could you could uh, so you think that you came from the west. You give you you are in the middle of this um, uh, kind of uh, flat top of the spire. So you are about fifteen feet from the edge that you could look over as you glance over. Uh, you try to orient yourself. And you can't quite, you see it's kind of shielded by a, a, a dune, so you can't see the, the hill clearly, but certainly you could probably, you, you would gather if there was some kind of battle that you would probably see mm-hmm. or hear it because uh, yeah. you have a And okay. now, Scott, we're now many hundreds of feet up because we, we already started yes. several hundred feet you up are, and then we you are But you don't high. have, you, I mean, if we were to fall off this, you, you, how many D10 do you actually have on your desk there? <laughs> If you were to fall off this, you would just die. <laughs> oh. Huh. All I'm right. trying to gauge whether there's a chance that they already know what went down out in the desert. Um, all right. Are, are I, there people stationed at these spyglasses constantly, or is it just they're there, just there, there? There's one uh, spyglass uh, oh, okay, on a tripod you. at, uh, where is it? Uh, 
Uh, oh, I've shared the page, so I don't actually know where it is. It is, uh, where is it? Uh, at the pinnacle's edge is a spyglass pointed downward. So in the, the northern pinnacle, uh, actually, I would say eastern. So to your uh, right from the gazebo. You're currently standing in the gazebo uh, looking at him. He is yeah. uh, on the, the grass um, mm -hmm. pondering. Uh, sir, truly, you, you show us too much honor. We are but simpler travelers who are just beyond fortunate to stumble upon your uh, your hallowed halls on, on this day of all days. Um, but but we were hoping that perhaps in addition to uh, observing and celebrating the uh, this great anniversary, um, we, we also come and seek of information, and perhaps we could be willing to uh, pay our way with with stories and tales of our many adventurers. I uh, do enjoy a, a, a fine story well told. Uh, you, of course, I, I hope Savra has already invited you to our grand feast uh, that will be happening. She was very kind, and uh, uh, we would be honored uh, to join you for, uh, for such a festivity. Uh, we, we bring with us perhaps the greatest three cream bard in mm. all, of, all of the lands. Uh, I, I was unaware me, of, I am of three cream bards. Yes, uh, I, I am Regdar. Uh, I'll well me to introduce uh, Kachka. Kachka. I bow. Ah, he bows to you. In as much as I can bow, given my weird insect It, bio, is, it uh, is a strange biology. bow, but he, he appreciates mm -hmm. the effort. Uh, my, my, my other friends here, uh, this is uh, uh, Omlal and, and Carlos. Hi. Uh, hello. And, uh, and, and Presta and Shara. I, I sort Same. of n incline my head a little bit. When when Amlal tries to bow, he's still much taller than that. Yeah. Like he can't. He, tra he keeps trying to gauge. Like, can yeah. I bow lower? Yeah. Uh, uh, well, you you of course will stay the night at the spire. We will we will give you quarters, and I'm sure you must be thirsty and uh, and tired. Uh, if you would like to retire before the feast, please please uh, feel free. Uh, you know, we were just taking in the view here. It's quite impressive, uh, an architectural feat you have here. Ah, uh, yes, thank um, you. And you know. It seems like you must you must be quite busy keeping these lands uh, safe and and under control. Ah, uh, the desert is a dangerous place. I probably don't have to tell you that, but uh, yes, we we try to help uh, where we can. Now tell me, how, what have things been like recently? Oh, his face darkens, and he says, "Great evil lurks amongst these hills. I'm sure that you will be aware. Depraved cultists, led by wretched monsters, spewing forth elemental magic. Uh, but let us speak of such matters after the feast has warmed our blood. I, I do not want to to uh, spoil your appetite with such tales. So, so okay. we will hold off on such. We, 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 we would like a good idea. We, we all, get this guy a little liquored up. We would. We, we will appreciate give each it. other just, meaningful you know. glances at this yes. point. I'm just saying, like, which yeah, playing it wrong. cool, but all. Also, not playing Meaningful. cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we we uh, very well. We we would be very eager to learn. You know, we do travel all throughout these lands, and to know of danger before you face it is of if of uh, an important survival skill. And you don't travel the wastes as long as some of my friends have here without with no, without knowing how important it is to to chat with the locals that you can trust before you do battle uh, with trust, those that trust you can't. Trust is key, my friend Regdar. I know sure. you can't trust many people in the waste, but I feel as though you know, we, we have a bond, I feel, already. I've only known you but a short time, but I can tell by the way you bear yourself and your companions uh, and their their courtly manners that you are of a class uh, much like myself. Oh my god. You know, it's like my... If I can lend my instrument to your celebrations this evening... Oh, please uh, do. I am more than willing and happy to. Yes. Uh, but you, I don't want you to feel as though you must sing for your supper, uh, dear Thrykree. No, you are you oh, are no, our no, guest. No. You do not do. You do not need. You do not owe us any payment. No, no. Think, our think food nothing is your of food. it. He would be it, honored. It is as if it to, is as payment for me, in fact, to be allowed to to play at to, per, to perform in such a great hall. That would be ceremony. He he um, strum a mean piccolo. He would be sad not to. <laughs> I've never um, seen anyone strum a piccolo. I am both intrigued and excited by such possibilities. You know, I can just tell you're good people. It's like it's like my mom always used to say. You know, in Athos, uh, some people are vultures, and some people are not vultures. And I feel like until today, I never really knew what she meant. But now it's all mm. clicking. I've got some important backstory over there. Regdar has He's a mom. It's good to not know. Vultures. <laughs> I am not quite Everyone sure what your, your mother meant by don't that. Don't you have a mom or like a well, brood, brood brood mother? It's <laughs> weird for three cream. <laughs> okay, <laughs> like a like a hive. Let's not get into this in front of company. 
<laughs> ah, vultures. Well, I know I know many things about vultures. I am sure your your mother must have been uh, a, a keen uh, a vulture connoisseur if she has such such uh, slogans that she she regaled you with in your your youth. I've never heard the phrase, but uh, I assume that the vultures are the good thing and the non vultures are the bad thing. Yes, that is my ah, understanding. I excellent. think it's a common common tier saying. Um, so Not, you know, well, I, you know, you learn something new every day, Regdar. Indeed. I, um, I feel as though I have already been enriched by your presence. Thank you. Many thanks. Many well, thanks. we will not. Uh, we will. I'm sure you have many preparations to do in the preparing for your festivities. Uh, I'm sure we'll see you later. Um, but perhaps we should leave you to your work and not be underfoot. Uh, thank you so much uh, well, for your time you, and hospitality. You are, of course, uh, feel free to uh, make use of our lovely uh, garden here at, at the top of the spire, but Savra can also show you to uh, quarters if you would like to rest. That would be lovely. Mm. Savra, make it so. And he turns his back to you. I play a quick power chord and then bow again. <laughs> he... he jumps a little because he was not expecting such a thing and he says well <laughs> hmm, thank you for the the preview of tonight's <laughs> entertainment it was it was quite exhilarating and i look yes. forward to hearing many more chords there's more power. where that came from mm. just you wait i i can hardly wait i will be counting the minutes until i can hear your full performance in the great hall and savra says well, maybe we should go he can he can go on quite a while <laughs> really <laughs> I don't lead know lead the way, Savra, and you know, um, I mean, just you know, th this place is very nice and very civilized. Uh, if you could just point out, uh, you know, any areas that are off limits that we should stay away from, that would be very helpful to us. We oh, wouldn't, no. we wouldn't want to do anything that would uh, <laughs> don't give them an out, impose on on customs. Ah, well, I mean, I suppose you should stay. See, out. see, see, this is how you know where to go. <laughs> <laughs> you should probably uh, stay out of uh, uh, the Lord Commander's apartment, uh, which I will show you where it is. Uh, and she goes down. What is his taste in pants, just out of curiosity? Does he favor well, purple? He, What's the door made us, out of? Yeah, you should show us where he keeps his keys, so we're just especially <laughs> sure not oh, well, to uh, guys, accidentally guys, get those keys. Guys, I had a great line. You're ruining it. <laughs> Well, uh, yeah, so she takes you down, once again, down the spiral staircase. You well, go down one well. level. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> oh, dear. And uh, she says, this is the third level where we have our sleeping quarters. And she points to a door and says, that is uh, the Lord Commander's apartment. Uh, you s make note of the door that is made of wood and banded uh, with uh, leather. Uh, you, you also notice most uh, relevant, perhaps, to a band of adventurers such as yourselves, that the lock, the door, seemed to have no locks. Excellent. That's the way we like our doors. That is very, relevant. Very trusting. Like the way we like yeah, our canals. See? And she no points way. to uh, the next door over and says, this is uh, Thanks, the night cell. Uh, I don't believe that there's anyone in here at the moment, so you can certainly Third floor, uh, bunk Lord here. Lord uh, Commander's uh, department down the spire. Is that where is... leading us? Oh, not, sorry, not, not Shara. Shara's in our group. <laughs> Savra. Savra points to, she opens the door, and you see... Uh, a chamber with two beds, a fireplace, a closet, two chests, and a small tapestry on the wall. Uh, she says, this is actually my quarters, but I won't be using it, so feel free to uh, uh, lay down here. If you would like any food, uh, I can either get it for you, or you can go to uh, the kitchen, which is on the ground level, which is where you, you came in. I would suggest not going further down uh, below ground level. There's only one level below that. That's the stable. Uh, the giant vultures don't like strangers so for your own safety i would suggest staying scott do they there. actually do they actually call it a sta stable they and don't call it like an aviary or anything they call it a, hmm. a staviary <laughs> and there you go and she says uh you you know it well now you know the so the ground floor is where you came in their kitchen is on the ground floor you've learned that uh she tells you which door it is so it is the uh northern wall has a door and beyond that is the kitchen uh, the second level is where the Great Hall is. Uh, you don't know if there's anything else on that level. I'm, I'm sure you could ask her if you like. Uh, the third level is uh, Knight's Quarters and the Lord Commander's apartment. And uh, there you go. So she says, would you like to rest or would you like me to bring you some food? Uh, what would I you think, like uh, uh, well, well, you know, it, it might be nice to rest for a little bit, but thank you. Oh, of um, course. We'll be around. Uh, how, how long do we have until the celebration? Uh, the celebration will start in two hours. And d just out of curiosity, uh, you know, so that my friend can 
tune his instrument ac- accordingly. Uh, what size sure. group are you uh, are you expecting? Uh, there uh, we are expecting all of the knights to to come. <laughs> there, there are different tunings based on the number of people <laughs> to whom I'm playing. It's well, true. I, I am I am unfamiliar with such uh, things, but there will be. Uh, that is why I am a bard and you are not. Very true. True words. Have hey, never. R- remember Look, when Reg- 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 Regar doesn't just walk into a spire and be like, "Tell us how many people you got. Where do you keep your money?" Um, <laughs> you know, fly casual. Oh. This is this is uh, a very unusual uh for your party to be doing things in a reasonable manner he, I, he just doesn't know like, what to do with us yeah i i don't know i feel like i'm flying real close to the sun here people <laughs> it is it is a quite unusual uh so the yeah, sun you, is... you, the, she says well they're about uh depending on how many emissions are being run currently four nights are off on a mission so we'll probably unless they come back there'll be maybe 10 to 12 nights tonight all right does a quick count of 10 to 12. Does a quick count of how many people are, are in the party. How many knights they could each kill. Um, doesn't do that out loud. Okay. Um, well, thank you. Thank Glad you for you all your that. hospitality. Savra, before you go, yes. uh, Thrall spoke of some bad goings-on in the desert near here. Oh, are yes. you aware of any of the, uh, the, the these goings-on that have been happening? Well, of course. I mean, the alluvial waste is... Uh, there's always bad things happening, which is why the society was founded, to help uh, yes. patrol But it sounds guys. as though things have been badder than the usual badness level of the things in the area ah, yes. lately. <laughs> Freedom, well, has... badder than bad. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there have been uh, some increased uh, activities. Uh, w- elemental magic seems to be rearing its ugly head um, oh dear! Uh, but you know, I I probably should uh, talk about such things. It, I should leave you to Thrall to explain. Um, it's not my place to talk about such does things. Well, as you does mentioned, Thrall does tend to go Karen's? on a bit. We thought perhaps uh, you there would be a bit more economy if we discussed it with you, but that's <laughs> fine. We we understand you probably have preparations to make and so forth. Yes, I'm. Uh, things must be ready. I must. I. Uh, it is my job to stand in the entry hall and make sure that uh, all is secure. So I will uh, I will leave you to your rest. Uh, please make use of, of the beds if you like. And uh, I will see you. I will come back in two hours to fetch you for the party. All right. You As might she... try looking on, on some of the other floors if you don't find us here. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, like I said, don't go into the stables uh, for your oh, of own course safety. Not. And uh, the, the kitchen's on the first floor. And I will be on the first floor. So if you want to say hello while you're down there, I'll be in the entry hall where you came in. Uh, well, have a rest. And we have a solarium if you would like to go uh, see some some uh, lush green that you don't normally see on Athos. It's quite quite interesting. That is on uh, the uh, first floor as well. All right. And she, uh, she bows and closes the door, and you are now in the knight's quarters. I check behind the tapestry. Uh, there is a wall behind the tapestry. Mm, suspicious. Why does she have two beds in her quarters? Maybe she shares it with somebody? She did say her, her quarters, though. Well, yeah. Yeah, I mean, but there's I mean, not. I mean, her, yeah, we should her, definitely ignore the logical excuse and come up with a, <laughs> a rich Maybe thing. she's two people. Yeah, <laughs> when it, at night she splits into two people. All, well, us, also, uh, Kachka, where do you think yeah. the vulture, her, vulture, her favorite vulture sleeps in the other bed? Oh, that's, that's a good point. Is there you a know, pile of scat next to the that, second bed? You know how you can tell? It's a feather bed. Um, hey, oh, hey, Regdar, no, maybe we should find out if all these knights have roommates because that could change the tuning. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey! Did she buy it? Yes, that's all that matters. Carlos, don't don't critique the, the plan. Yes, <laughs> you elect. Uh, it also affects how hard you strum a piccolo. The and... worst lie of all. <laughs> you know, at the foot of each bed, there is a uh, chest. And there are two uh, two chests. Omlal, check them out. Are they locked? Oh, they are uh, not. Omlal approaches one cautiously and then whispers. <laughs> the, the chest remains and silent. Kachka Kachka says very quietly yes I'm a mimic <laughs> Amla looks back and says inconclusive <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll poke the chest to uh, see if anything the happens the chest moves a little bit is it is it oh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Kachka casts minor illusion to make it appear as though uh, yes, minor uh, the illusion. chest has teeth the and spell, a tongue. The spell that's only used are griefing party members. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. Uh, as soon you... as the chest opens, it a uh, tongue shoots out. <laughs> ah! Amal hides behind the tapestry. 
<laughs> All right, you see some boots behind the tapestry. <laughs> also, also Alma, Alma is pretty big, and I assume it's just a normal sized tapestry. Yes. So you also see his head over the tapestry. <laughs> yes, you don't you don't see his his torso, but. Uh, all right, he comes uh, out again. <laughs> I mean, guys, there's probably not anything super exciting in here, and um, it doesn't hurt to look around. I but I really anything... want to go look at the solarium. Was there anything good in the chest? Yeah, the solarium sounds cool. So, uh, just let's check in here. Game plan: uh, We'll attend this feast. Mm-hmm. Uh, see if we can get more information from the the head guy after the feast. Is that mm-hmm. is that the plan? And during the feast, I mean, it wouldn't hurt to also ask if they have had any other guests recently. Yeah. Um, because it's possible that, that that caravan or another one stopped along their way as well, since these people seem to be, you know, friendly, at least now, on I'm the surface. Not, I'm not picking up anything nefarious from these people. Is anyone else it's slightly more insightful than, I, than you know? My original could, insight check was for Savra. I guess I'll roll another one for... Like... Oh, which that's not great. That's only a 10. Yeah. For, well, uh, Regjar rolled roll. a 17, but, you know, we don't have any reason to believe that these people actually, like, turn people into pies or anything, right? <laughs> no, I mean, Vulture so far, pie. so good. They they have yeah. invited you to a feast. And you don't think that they're going to eat you? Are we the feast, they mentioned though, the, the elemental question. magic, which means that yeah. either mm-hmm. they're telling the truth and they're actually allies and can help us with the what's going on sure. here, or, you know, they're liars and, and this is a been, they've been playing the long game for 10 years. One of those. I'm, sus- I'm suspicious because nobody on Athos is nice. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, especially that's especially out in the wasteland. That's like, yeah, like that's a ticket to Dead Town. Um, yeah. I, I don't know what's going on there. That's also, like, like, doesn't care. She's just excited the the possibility of getting to strut her stuff. Or I also, so. you know, you don't build a spire out of donations. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I can't remember if I rolled last time to see if I knew anything about the the Feathergale group. Uh, oh yeah! In all my travels, I think did... you did, okay. and you, nobody knew anything, right, and everyone cool. was quite upset that the NPC knew of things that you didn't. Well, I mean, you did say they've only been around here ten years. Maybe it's been more than ten years since I came past this way, or something. That is true. And you so. also know not now. You you uh, all of your characters have the history with Athis that there it is full of ruins and other kind of strange mm-hmm. structures. So there's no you could. Assume that perhaps they built the spire, or that they just kind of moved into oh, a pre-built true. spire. And yeah, based on it after like the, the construction and looking around, do we think that this is uh, you know ten years old, or does this have the look of, of something that's been much older and restored? Uh, this looks like a much older uh, yeah. structure, um, and all of the rooms I should mention feature very large windows that have shutters that can be closed. They're currently open, so it's very bright mm-hmm. and uh, a little windy. Um, in the uh, the quarters okay. that you're in right now. Now that we have been close and I, you know, have actually seen this spire, do I know anything about this spire? I mean, in you know, b- previous to ten years ago, does this would I have heard any tales that that I, remind me of this building? Uh, no, I, this. Mm-hmm. So the desert, the alluvial wastes, especially, but uh, all of Athos is just kind of full of constantly uncovered and recovered ruins. So mm-hmm. having a tower like this is unusual in that the the top of the floor obviously has a lush green lawn, which is strange. Uh, mm-hmm. And they seem to apparently have a a room full of plants, which is also so strange. There's a giant but... spire with people who fly around and giant vultures, and like nobody's heard of these guys. <laughs> You haven't. Well, the, lo- the locals had. <laughs> yeah, the, lo- the local guy knew all about it. We were the idiots in this situation. When you well, say I mean, no local, had... sure, I guess that's... When you say sense. nobody had heard of it, you mean we hadn't heard of it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean so... us. No, uh, None of us. Um, well, nobody outraged. in the party has heard of mm-hmm. the Feathergale Society or the Feathergale Spire. Um, is it safe to assume that, that with the amount of plant life going on, that there's some, some kind of spooky magic going on in Athos? Is that, like, just a given? It is unusual okay. uh you would know it doesn't necessarily have to be spooky magic it could be just uh so elemental magic in general is more uh yeah spooky. kind of is is more uh, accepted in uh athos than uh arcane because elemental mm-hmm. magic does not require sucking the life force out of people it generally does the opposite so uh you you could imagine that either a they have access to uh, a large body of underground water perhaps or something or they're using some sort of magic to uh sustain right. their plant life well maybe when we one, check out the solarium we can we can sort of mm-hmm. see if there are you know pipes one, leading, leading one down more or something. one more question uh just to avoid perhaps uncomfortable dinner topic conversation did we see any iconography of any of the uh sorcerer kings that we should like you know mm-hmm. like guys don't don't like you know. Don't talk bad about any sorcerer kings at, at dinner until we know who, who, yeah. which side these guys might be on. Or was there like a giant house sham mural or something yeah. like that? <laughs> uh, 
Uh, no, so you, you're in a room that has features of tapestry, so you look at the tapestry, and it is uh, showing hippogriffs in flight, uh, being uh, ridden by a, a, a knight that looks very much like a Feathergill mm-hmm. knight, and it seems as though they are flying off into heroic battle. Uh, yeah. So they're into their own thing. They're not. It seems like these people have mostly crawled up their own backsides and yeah. are not particularly. Right. Bef- in- Before we do anything else, I want to remind everybody that we do have this little figurine of the Griffin, which can fly. It could not fly all of us at once, but if it turns out we need to make an escape from this place, there are big windows, and we could have the Griffin ferry us out of the tower. And you know, also that's just a choosing. great story. If like we get to do a fight at dinner mm-hmm. and fly a Griffin out the window and away yeah. from the magic spire. <laughs> I mean. It- Admittedly, we probably also have to. Let's be just fast off. forward to that. So. We also know that certain other members of our party may or may not be able to cast Featherfall. So mm. that is true. That is true. We have that as, uh, yeah. in our back pocket we would, as well. It, regardless of whether we do that or the, the Griffin, we'd still probably have to fight off vultures in the process, unless we were sneaking out in the middle of the night. So just just wanted to remind everybody of the tools we have at our disposal. Mm-hmm. Yes. We also have some uh, some weapons and things that we can murder them with. Featherfall so, lasts for one it's minute. It's not murder so- if they're attacking us back. Uh, Featherfall lasts one minute, right. so we have to do some math to figure out whether that saves you from falling from the side or not. Can you so, cast it again? Uh, I don't think so. Mm. Couldn't you just wait until we had fallen almost to the ground and <laughs> then cast Featherfall? Yeah, it's mm. like when you're in an elevator that's falling, you just jump right yeah, before jump. it gets to the bottom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. You would. You you could do that. You know, you'd need to make a concentration check, but yep. yeah. And if you fail the so concentration I- check. Bad things could happen. We all die. So I would say, like, fishing around in, in the commander's room is probably not a great idea at this point, since these also, guys seem to be on the up and up, so maybe we should just cruise around, check out the solarium Let's for check the next out. I mean, hours. I figured somebody was going to volunteer to sneak off and do sneaky stuff, mm-hmm. um, and it was just a question of whether we discussed that or if that person <laughs> goes rogue. So, I think sorry. we should. I, I do think that in the interest of learning everything we can, we should peek through the uh, the chests that are here. Like, not not rifle through, but at least, at least look in them. All right, so we're not looting we're peeking right yeah <laughs> somebody go make hold it the door that, that we roll a uh, peeking check please all right i'm gonna go hold the door shut just in case somebody comes and opens it at the uh, yes, exact I should moment at this that point say that around. while the doors that you've seen don't have any locks you can easily bar them if you want they all open uh inward so you can bar them from the inside mm-hmm um, would that be like a stealth check to be able to, to you know, look at stuff and leave it exactly as it had been before? Uh, that's a good question. Why don't you try? I would just say that. Or sleight of in, hand? Investigate. Oh, I got good investigation. I'll right, check well one then of them. I'll, I'll watch the door. Kachka, you, uh, you investigate. All right. I will investigate. Uh, so chest number one. Chest number one. And I'm listening at the door, too, to see if I can hear anybody coming. That is a 26. Well, it's certainly a chest. And it looks uh, as though it is just kind of your run-of-the-mill uh, footlocker. It, it contains some, some clothes. <laughs> it contains feet! Oh, my God! Uh, a lot of sneakers. It has... Uh, <laughs> let me see. Where are we? Here we are. So many feet. And it has uh, a bunch of seemingly trinkets that are valuable. You know, there's gold and, and gems. And you would guess that it's the contents total worth are 77 gold pieces. Uh, <laughs> it's good to know. <laughs> but there is nothing, nothing looks out of place. Uh, if, you, if you were thinking, what would I find in a chest in a knight's room? Uh, you would find such things here. Nothing's like crazy. All right. I'll check the other one. All right. And that is a 27. Excellent. Well, this chest contains valuables worth 78 gold pieces. Uh, <laughs> this one's I, better. And uh, the, the only difference here... This well, there the Dark Sun version of the Showcase Showdown. <laughs> there are uh, different sets of clothing. Uh, the chest number one seemed to have uh, women's clothing. This seems to have a men's clothing. It also has a white cloak with feathers on its shoulders. Uh, I see. So somewhere my favorite, any... my favorite cream song in a somewhere there's coat, a naked the male knight in this spire. <laughs> Have or, we seen other people wearing that same cloak de-cloaked. here? Uh, yeah, so, that's yeah. Sovereign was wearing one. Both of the knights that were riding the vultures had them. Okay. Uh, uh, Savra was wearing one, and Thrall was wearing a okay. much more majestic yes. version. I just wanted to make sure that this was like basically the same style as as that. Yes, and also so. one of the dead dudes out in the desert was wearing one. Mm-hmm. Correct. Okay. So that's in the chests. All right. Maybe we should have scooped that up while we were out there. Yep, you just took a tattered gray cloak. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, that tec- that one wasn't technically grave robbing because it was just lying around. So that's true. Uh, technicality. That's right. That's the space we operate in. It's not in the yeah, grave. It's... it's not grave robbing. <laughs> it's just, it's just, just desert desert robbing now. Yeah. You were that's salvage, up. man. Salvage. It's, it's... All right. Nothing All right. good in these chests. Let's, let's head to the than... uh, solarium. Maybe stop in the kitchen for you know a quick bite to eat. Yeah. A hours so you you that. are all. Amal really wants to get one of himself those vulture legs just to know. <laughs> they don't. Eat no, vultures. don't. Let's uh, ixnay on the ultra leg, ultra ve egg leg, <laughs> egg leg. Egg leg. <laughs> How dare you speak of my brother that way? <laughs> <laughs>